What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another Euro 2020 fancy video. For match day two, we did a limitless guy because I knew a lot of people were on that strategy. For match day three in this one, we're doing a limitless and a wildcard guide in one because one... There's not too much time until the deadline anyway. And two, there's going to be people on different strategies. Obviously, you might not be using either chip, which is fine. We're going to do a match day preview tomorrow just to answer general questions. So look out for a topic uh, or a tweet from me on that tomorrow. But for now, we are looking at the limitless chip. We are looking at the wildcard chip. Matches to target, teams to target, players to target, and all that good stuff. Give it a like if you enjoy it. Hit that subscribe button. Let's jump into it. Okay, so before we jump into the actual drafts for limitless and wildcard for match day three, I'm going to go through some talking point some things to consider um, some of these will apply for both some will be one or the other but i'll talk through that um, the first point is six points for a team probably means rotation so what i mean by that if a team wins their first two games they are very likely to rotate in the third game now at the time recording and probably by the time this goes out we'll have only seen three matches from match day two but obviously so obviously there's a lot to go but because of the quick turnarounds i can't leave this video any longer because i've still got team selection match day preview etc to do so keep an eye on which teams get six points from the first two so italy have already done it Belgium will be in a good place to do it. England are in a good place to do it as well. Um, I think France possibly too. I think everyone thinks France are going to win that group anyway. But that's something to consider that in match day three, they then may rotate. Now, because of the... I think it's a bit stupid. Like, it's nice that a lot of teams go through to the next round. But it feels a bit stupid that four of the six third place teams will go through so we're actually only going to eliminate like eight teams from the, the group stages which is absolutely crazy but it is what it is so for example we already know italy have got six they're definitely through no matter what wales have got four now i think four points will be enough for, for most of the third place teams i think there's going to be some third place teams on three points so wales are probably through already whether or not they come first second or third is still up for grabs now i don't think even if italy rotate that wales are going to be able to beat them they've done really well fair play to them gareth bale and ramsey in particular were brilliant yesterday um but obviously italy is a tough task even if they rotate but wales are probably not going to with just four points the six points is the key consideration. So keep an eye on which teams hit that marker. Uh, and obviously pay attention to what else has happened in the group. Like if Croatia and Czech Republic draw, for example, and England win, then England are going to be first no matter what, right, with six points because no other team then will be able to get more than six points. So they will almost certainly rotate to rest players. It's a long tournament, etc. These teams are hoping to go far. So that's a key consideration, right? What have teams got left to play for as well? If a team's down and out, it doesn't necessarily mean we should avoid their players but you know morale's low there's not much to go on there if they've got a tough enough opponent anyway who's still got something to play for it could be difficult it's worth considering i'm not saying it should let us dictate uh, absolutely all our decisions because odds and like how good the team is etc is still the most important but just take it into account um also day one team sheet so if you look at this now on day one of match day three because it's the third group game all the teams play at the same time from that group so italy wales switzerland and turkey are all at the same time because the deadline is five o'clock we will get that team sheet uh before we have to lock in our teams this is really important for italy in particular in my opinion because they've got six points we don't know how much they're going to rotate will some of their cheap players start the funny thing is if Berardi gets a rest it'll probably be chiesa that comes in and he costs more but for example we could have Bellotti up front he's eight million instead of um immobile who's 10 uh, we could have bastoni maybe come in at center back we've already seen chiellini go off with an injury yesterday could Benucci do a rest? Bastoni comes in 4.5 million, etc. Right? A Serbi who came on, uh, I think it might be a Cherby actually. I've probably got the name wrong. He's only 5 million anyway, right? He came on for Chiellini. So these things are going to be important. More so probably if you're on a wild card, but still on a limitless chip, you want to know who's playing, right? And if you're going to target Italy, which should be a good game for Wales, it's worth looking at. Same for Switzerland, to be honest. I mean, Switzerland need a win now. Uh, and they can get it against Turkey. Turkey have been really poor. And I think Switzerland will get the win there as well. So keep that in mind. Um, also, don't fall into the money trap. Now, it's very easy to say for those of us that played Limitless Match Day 2. Well, we fell into the Insigne trap. He was more expensive. So we went for him over Brady. I don't think that's fair. I think Brady is a good option. Yes, at 6 million. Just because Insigne blanked. 
doesn't mean that it was a bad move to pay the extra. Because don't forget, Insigne scored in the first game. He outscored Berardi, right? So on the limitless, it was the right call, in my opinion. You know he's definitely going to start. You know he's going to get minutes, etc. But there are going to be some teams that will rotate. So the guy you see on screen, if Belgium get a second win and then they got six points, they may rotate. Lukaku might miss out from match day three, and instead Batshuayi comes in. He's still a good option for Belgium. He's not quite as good as Lukaku, but if there's no other options you want, don't feel like you have to spend 10, 11, 12 million uh, on a striker just because you've got the money. So on a limitless chip, don't fall into the money trap. But I still think when you look at the drafts in a minute, there is money to be spent. So just think about that. So they're the things to take into consideration. Let's look at the chips. Let's start with Limitless. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do this, right? We're going to talk about the Limitless chip, but obviously there are some players which are cheaper from these teams, which might be an option if you're on wildcard or if teams rotate. So you get, pay attention to the Limitless and the wildcard draft because there's going to be players under consideration that I'm going to talk about if teams rotate. You really need to pay attention to what happens in match day two because if the likes of Belgium, Netherlands, England, etc., drop points in their second game they are more likely to play their full uh, like their full strength uh, side or full strength players etc in match day three to be honest if you take allegiances away from which country you support or which team you want to do well if you're on a limitless ship in match day three you probably want uh, these teams to lose or you know draw their second game so they have to put out a full strength squad because you want to be able to spend as much money as possible because that gives you an advantage over those who either aren't going to play a chip or are going to play their wild card instead now before we talk about the players let's look at the fixtures there are definitely some standouts for match day three right i think italy versus wales is a really good game i think wales have done well but italy have been brilliant right they've i, I think i saw a stat that they've never or not it's either not for a long time or never scored more than two goals in a European Championship game. Now they've done it twice, 3-0. Mancini has got them so well drilled. They are extremely difficult to score against, and they score a lot of goals. I think Wales are in trouble. Wales have done really well, but Turkey were poor. And they and they and to be fair, not taking anything away from Wales, it was a great result against Switzerland as well. They did really well to uh, get that goal to draw the game. Italy, like, Italy are going to trouble most of the teams in this tournament, right? So I think Italy is still a really good game. I think this day is really important, okay? So Netherlands versus North Macedonia, this is a really good fixture to target. And Belgium versus Finland is great. Like, Finland are poor. I said that before the game yesterday. They did struggle against Russia, right? And Russia are not exactly one of the strongest teams in this tournament. So Belgium could have a field day, I think, against Finland. So that's definitely one to look out for. I think Denmark versus Russia, maybe I would have considered... But we're going to have to wait and see what they do in their second game. Again, I think there's two trains of thought. Either they're coming out, you know, doing it for Christian Eriksen, just showing they've got some fight in them. Or they're just not going to be in the right frame of mind. It's going to be a really difficult game. And I don't think anyone would blame them if that was the case. So maybe that's a fixture that I would avoid. Russia have obviously got a lot to play for as well. So Netherlands, Belgium and Italy for sure. I think England, right? Again, let's see how they do against Scotland. The one thing I would like to see England do against weaker opposition. And again, objectively, Czech Republic and Scotland are weaker than England is. Yes, they did well against Croatia. But if they nick a goal early enough i want them to then see uh, i want to see them then put that team to bed right go on and score two three four goals I mean, not many teams have scored four goals right i don't think have any teams scored four goals so far i don't think so it could happen but you know what i mean when portugal finally got their goal against hungary they went on and scored three italy aren't just you know i mean italy can hold the ball against anyone and they're still going for goals right they've scored three goals i want to see england do that and if they can do that against scotland which will be a difficult game i'm sure for them that I think the fact that no other play, sorry, only one other team play this day makes England probably one of the best captains. I think Croatia could be Rebic, Perisic could be captain options. Um, Czech Republic obviously got Schick, who did really well against Scotland. But ultimately, I think you're looking at England and maybe Croatia for this day. So they're important for captaincy reasons. And on the last day, you've got lots of big teams, right? So Spain versus Slovakia is a good team to target. And we all know that Germany versus Hungary is as well. So they are probably the standouts. Germany, Spain, England, Belgium, Netherlands, and then Italy. Just remember that Netherlands and Belgium play the same day. So you can't captain Lukaku and the pie, right? Same as match day two. So they're teams we're looking at. So I've pretty much covered them pretty well. I think Belgium and Netherlands have probably got the easiest fixtures. So for this, I've got three from both those sides. So Depay, Wijnaldum, and Dumfries from Netherlands. And then Mounier, Lukaku, and Courtois 
from Belgium. Now, Eden Hazard is a player I've talked about quite a lot. Still not managed to have him in my team yet because he's just not fit. If he gets a good amount of minutes in this second game, I would hope then that he'll start in the last game. The problem is I'm not sure he's getting 90 minutes regardless. So I think he could be a good punt. But there's lots of good midfielders this this week. So if if for captaincy, for example, uh, and, and bearing in mind, I've built this team with no rotation in mind. If there's rotation, we're going to have to change some players. And I'll talk about that a bit more for the wild card. But I think Germany are definitely going to have something to play for. Even if they win their second game against Portugal, they will still only be on three points. So they have to go and beat Hungary. So I think three German players is an absolute must-have. So Gozens attacking left wing back. Um, Gnabry and Havertz if you want to go for midfielders you could go for Muller or Werner but Werner didn't even start I don't believe the last game um, he came on as a substitute so I think Havertz and Gnabry are going to probably start or if you don't want Kane, Depay, Lukaku you could put Muller in there instead and, and free up a midfield slot but I really like this midfield I think Torres against Slovakia again keep an eye on how Spain do in the second game because I think there could be some rotation so I thought Olmo looked good in the first game but we need to see Spain play again Ronaldo looked really good I mean he likes to shoot on sight for the Netherlands he gets further forward as well than he does for Liverpool um, so I think he's great and Sinia I still think is the best captain for match day one it could be Immobile by the way if he starts um, but again, the only, I've got nothing against him like the last two games or the last two match days. He just takes up a valuable forward slot. And I just think Lukaku, Depay uh, and Kane are better options. So my captaincies would be Insigne day one, uh, then Lukaku or Depay, probably Lukaku if he's going to start. Uh, and obviously on this day, you won't get the team sheets for Belgium, but you will get them for Netherlands. Right, so you will know if he started or not, and if you if he's not starting, maybe you put it on Lukaku instead. Uh, then Kane, and then Havertz or Gnabry on the last day. So I think that's a pretty good look at um, a pretty good look at captaincies there, uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Then you've got Italy still covered with Spins, Spinazzola and Donnarumma again. They might rotate those positions, in which case keep an eye out on the team sheets. You can change that at will, uh, and that's about it. Then then Alba um, in defence. So I don't think he's going to get rotated, but I guess there is a slight chance you might go for someone safer. But that team looks pretty solid. You're covering um, only a few teams. So you've covered England, Belgium, Netherlands, Italy, Spain. And Germany. So six teams covered and that is it. But they are really strong teams with really strong fixtures. So that's the limitless chip. Let's look at the wild card where I have put in some cheaper options um, and also some potential uh, players that might... We'll talk more about players that might rotate in as well. Okay, so on first glance, the wild card looks pretty difficult to nail because you want those three German players. You probably want Harry Kane captain. Uh, but there are some cheaper options that have kind of emerged over the last couple of match days, which I'll talk about. And also, you hope, if you're on wild card, like I probably will be, that you get some rotation that works in your favor, right? Because then the players are cheaper. And some of it's going to be guesswork because we're not going to get all the lineups, but we're going to try and get as much knowledge as we can. I'll do my team selection video on Saturday this week, probably, uh, the day before the deadline. Um, and then if I've played my wild card, I'll have an idea of who I'm going to go for. But there are the one thing that's happened, or one thing that's going to help us, I think, a little bit, is that Russia, in the last game, played two, four million defend oh sorry defensive players so one was a defender um Deviv, and then there was a goalkeeper as well which was not from turkey um it was from russia of course and i've clicked the wrong button it was um safanov right he played instead of shunning and the fact they got a clean sheet probably bodes quite well for them the problem with going for safanov in your team is stecklenburg's got a good fixture against north macedonia and they play the same day so originally i had both of them but i think it's worthwhile having someone else in the team so for this reason i've gone for the turkey goalkeeper because there is only a few 4.5 million goalkeepers that i think have got a genuine shot at a clean sheet don't get me wrong, this is a tough fixture, right? But Turkey is a must-win game for them. They cannot afford to go down. I do think, for what it's worth, Switzerland will win it. But for this, it's just a funds issue. Now, there are downgrades that can be made. Hazard could come out of the team if we still don't think he's going to start. We still don't think he's going to get too many minutes. But I do think he's a potential nice capsy option. Um, if Netherlands aren't going to rotate, yes, Depay is a good option. But Veghorst could also be a really good option. He was very close to goal in the first game. We need to see, uh, I mean, close, like, in proximity to the goal. Obviously, he did get um, a return as well. Um 
So he's someone to consider for 7 million. I've got Kane and Vakampsi and I've still got Gnabry and Havertz because I, I don't really want to go too cheap on the German team because I think they have got a lot to play for. They play on the last day. There's good captaincy options there. Um, and I've got Alaba as the cheap player as well. So only 0 0.3 left over. Now, obviously, if England win, then someone like Calvert-Lewin could come in. Someone like Sancho could come in. It might be Grealish. So there's ways to play it. Um, like I said, when I was talking about the limitless chip, Berardi might be a bit difficult because if he gets rotated, which I think he probably will, then it'd be Chiesa that comes in. But we might get some cheaper players um, at the back as well for Italy. So it's very difficult now to build the team. But here's some changes that I might make depending on whether Netherlands, England, Belgium in particular win their game. So the, the German players, I think, are locked in. The only thing that might change is Werner or Muller up front. And I'd probably take out Gnabry or Havertz. Probably Havertz, but I haven't really decided yet. Um, and I've got Rebic, who's playing um, Scotland on the same day as Kane. So I don't think he's a bad option. Perisic as well. But... One player that I've definitely got my eye on is a forward for Italy, um, and that is Belotti, right? Because we're going to get the team sheet, he might start against Wales. You know, maybe got not necessarily a point to prove, but you want to show the manager that you can do it if for any reason he doesn't want to play a Mobley or a Mobley gets injured or whatever it might be. So that's an 8 million starter potentially against Wales for a great Italy side, right? Um, in defence as well, so downgrades, let's get rid of them. Um, it was a Serbia that came on, right? So he could be a decent option. We'll have to wait and see whether someone else starts. There are some 4.5 million. So Toloi um, and um, Bastoni as well, if either of them start. But suddenly you're you're saving budget already, right? But going for these different Italians, although we might have to go for um, Chiesa as well. But we'll wait and see what happens. But that still gives you 3.3 million to upgrade somewhere else. So maybe instead of Veghorst, um, you can just go straight up to Depay, for example, and put him back in. And suddenly you're making gains elsewhere to put players back in. And all this is going to depend on who's going to rotate. I do think there is scope to have a pretty good defence outside of Daviv. So Mounier against Finland, Gozens against Hungary, um, Dumfries against North Macedonia, and obviously then your Italian defender as well. It's a pretty nice back line. And then you still cover, you have double Netherlands defence with um, Stecklenburg as well. If you could afford it, you'd definitely put someone like Wijnaldum in and maybe get rid of Dumfries or Stecklenburg. But I think from a goalkeeper perspective, I might try and save some money here. What I would say if you can stretch a little bit more, is Simon against the Vakit is probably a really good option. So instead of having... So maybe you have Stecklenburg, and instead of the Turkish goalkeeper, um, you put in Simon, Simon, uh, instead. You've got to save 0.2 million, but I don't think that would really be too difficult. I mean, an easy one out is Hazard. The only thing on wildcard is I'm thinking about captaincy. So if Belotti starts, I would probably captain him. Um, Imbolo is someone as well that I would consider for 8 million because I think Turkey have just been so poor. They really have. Like I think when I spoke about teams pre pre-tournament, I spoke a lot about the teams to target, mostly based on the odds, right? I wasn't even saying, oh, this team's rubbish, that team's rubbish. It was all based on odds. And the biggest kickback I got was from Turkey. You're underrating Turkey. Turkey are going to score goals against Italy. They've been really poor, right? Wales, I don't know. I didn't see a lot of the second half, but I saw all the first half. I thought Wales were brilliant. Um, and I wouldn't say they played Turkey off the park, but Turkey did not have too many chances, right? Maybe that changed in the second half. I haven't managed to watch the highlights yet, but... Turkey really poor. So Mbolo is another option for 8 million that I would consider. So I think if Belotti starts, I'd probably captain him. If Mbolo starts, um, which, he, which he almost certainly will, then he could be a captain as well if you didn't want to go for Insigne. Um, and I think that's I think that's pretty good. I mean, 9.8 from midfielder. It could just be Torres in. Torres at Olmo for, for Spain because they've got a good fixture. And suddenly, again, you're spending a bit more money. Maybe if you don't want Rebic, um, you can go up to... You could go up to um, Mbolo, who I said. Obviously, the one issue with this team right now is no Harry Kane. So you've got to think about your captaincy for that day. But I'm just putting a few um, ideas together. So that is the wildcard side right now. I'll try and refine that and narrow down some players before I do my team selection on Saturday. I'm going to keep a close eye on what happens. The one player that I really want to take a look at is um, Batshuayi. Because I think for 6.5 million, a Belgian forward is excellent value. Um, and if I thought he was going to start, he'd almost certainly be in. What I would say for the limitless players 
is if De Bruyne and Hazard are going to start. They're big differentials for you um, in match day three against Finland because they need minutes. You don't want them going into the knockout rounds having not played yet. And I think De Bruyne has been training. Hazard's already got minutes. If they both come on in match day two, there has to be a chance they play in match day three. I'll try and get that info. Like um, Yesterday, I got some info that um, which I tweeted about saying that they were both expected to be on the bench. But for match day three, that might not be the case. So limitless players keep an eye out. It's difficult to do that if you're on a wild card, but you could get at least one of them. So you have to think about captaincies. Um, so yeah, we'll keep an eye on the Italy clean sheets, uh, team team sheets, I should say. We'll hope that Bakshuayi comes in. Veghorst instead of Depay, Belotti, Chiesa, Serbi. They could all be cheap options to get on the Italian defence. So I don't think you're in big trouble if you're on a wild card, but there are going to be some sacrifices, one of which is probably to have a 4 million Russian over goalkeeper um, or defender to be honest if you didn't want stecklenburg you could do um really quickly just before we shut this bit off um you could put the russian keeper in safanov and have simon as well and he's still got 2.8 million to upgrade so you could go back to instead of the pie having um having harry kane in there um, which is pretty nice again you've got to think about captaincy for uh this day um because right now i've got no well i've got bad shuai haven't i um, so Batshuayi could be a captain or Mounier. There's something to consider. There's lots of options on wildcard. I th I think, right, Limitless is obviously better, right? There's no hiding from that. But with wildcard, I think you could be quite inventive and quite maybe risk-taking with the players that might start. It's going to be an interesting one. Let me know what you think about these players. There we go. That is it for this one. Please do give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you did enjoy it, if you did find it useful. This, I'll be honest, this kind of guy, limitless guy, that you know, I've put through like a first look at um, some drafts before the tournament. I did the limitless match day two guy. This is definitely the toughest one because we just don't know what rotation is going to be like. If you can get the rotation correct, you're in for some big points, I think, for this match day. But it is going to be difficult. I think if you're on a wild card, you probably hope that a lot of teams get to see Six points in match day two if you're on a limitless you probably hope that they don't and you're in a really good position where you can just get the big players Lukaku, Depay, Kane etc fit them all in along with your German players etc maybe have a fun punt on De Bruyne or Hazard on a wild card it's going to be much more difficult but that Italy team sheet should help us out um, quite a lot so I'll leave it there I'm going to do a match day preview probably tomorrow team selection will be out on Saturday I'll try and do a deadline stream on Sunday as well ahead of the match day three deadline get my team locked in but until then thank you for watching hit that like button hit subscribe and I'll see you soon